Hey, so I just got back from seeing the new Wes Anderson movie, The French Dispatch. Which, I'm just going to start out by saying this. I hate how Disney has been distributing their properties that aren't solely Disney. Like, especially 20th Century Fox and their sub-properties, like Fox Searchlight especially. They've been doing a really crappy job of it. They're dropping all their movies, like, in October at roughly the same time. In between all the other, like, uh, other companies, uh, huge competition. So basically, the 20th Century Fox movies don't stand a chance at the box office. And it almost feels intentional, like, Disney buy out 20th Century Fox so that they could see their rivals bombing, though they don't make a cent off of it, when they could be making money off of it, you know? And I just don't understand. It's like a frustrating lose-lose, you know? Uh, and I want to show up and support these great movies because they're great. I don't want to show up at the dumb Disney movies because they're not. Uh, and this is one of the good ones. Uh, I mean, it's Wes Anderson, so you kind of know what to expect here. Uh, there's a great large ensemble cast here. Just a lot of good things. I had to travel far out of my way to see this movie. It wasn't at any of my local movie theaters. But that's okay, because when the end result is worth it, it's worth it. Uh, this lived up to my expectations more than Dune did. Uh, Dune, I would say, wasn't like as good as Villeneuve's other movies. I would say that this is as good as Wes Anderson's other movies. Uh, it's not my favorite. Uh, that would belong to either uh, Grand Budapest Hotel or the Royal Ten Bombs. And it's not my least favorite either. I think that would either be Ball Rocket or... Uh, the one I always forget, what is that one called? The, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember. It's the cross-country one, I'm trying to remember. The J Darjeeling Limited. Those are the two that, like, are my least favorite, I think. So it's not either of those four. So it just kind of goes in the middle four. I think the middle four are, starting at best to worst, uh, Life Aquatic... Might be, and then the rest of them just go in any order. So, like, Moonrise Kingdom, I think, goes next. Or this. That might be this. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Isle of Dogs. Uh, any that I'm forgetting? Rushmore. Oh, I forgot Rushmore. Rushmore's so good. I think that one might go above all the ones I just mentioned, except for Life Aquatic. Uh, let me think in order. Is that all of them? I think that might be all of them. Yeah, it feels like it's all of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's where I rank it. Uh, as always, impeccably designed and colorful. Just really good. Uh, love the cinematography. Love the duality. This one's like probably Wes Anderson's most ambitious project yet, which is really saying something. There's tons of variety going on here, which I really like. Some of it, I would nitpick that uh, the editing felt a little rough around the edges. I feel like it's kind of a pandemic thing, though, because the movie was in production around when the COVID hit and all that. And I feel like there's some sequences in the movie that, and maybe it was an artistic choice. Maybe I'm looking into it too hard. But, uh, it feels like there's some sequences in the movie that could benefit if, like, they had more time to work on it. Uh, same with the editing. The editing feels a little qu too quickly put together. To the point where there's points in the movie that don't feel, like, as deliberate as maybe I've come to expect from Wes Anderson. Like, there are pauses on black screens that last a little too long towards the beginning of the movie. There are, like, three scenes like that towards the beginning of the movie. And they're not at all, like, where you would expect them to be. And there aren't very lengthy ones at all in between the actual stories, which is where I would put at any black screens, if at all. Uh, I think the whole cast did a great job here. If I had to pick any standouts, I'd probably pick the... I don't even want to attempt the name of the guy... That was the Bond villain, but like him, he was good in this. I also really liked, uh, I think, I really liked 
Benicio Del Toro. Benicio Del Toro is really good in this. Uh, Bill Murray is very Bill Murray, and that's always a good thing. Uh, Stephen Wright did a good job here. Basically, all the people that had to lead a section were really good. Everyone is just so charming in this movie, whether they have a big role or a small role. Uh, Francis McDormand is really good in it. So is Timothy Chalamet. Is that how you say his name? I don't know. I'm probably butchering some of these names, but I'm trying. Uh, literally everyone is good in this movie. Uh, I wouldn't say anyone shines more than anyone else, but those were just personal favorites of mine. Uh, what else can I talk about? The movie never goes into full screen, which the theater that I saw it at for once had a ginormous screen. And so it was a little disappointing that the film never made full use of that. But when I'm going to be watching it at home, I'm going to like the fact that it never uses the whole screen because that's going to make it feel more unique. Uh, what else? There were a couple of other things I had complaints for that were kind of minor nitpicks, uh, which I don't really have any other minor. I don't for the other West Anderson movies. I don't remember having minor nitpicks apart from Ball Rocket and uh, the Darjeeling Limited, I remembered having straight up complaints about. That's why I think I put that one in last. Uh, so I think that puts this one probably in sixth. Uh, the other complaint that I had for this one was the humor didn't always hit quite right. It never like, landed as intended. There were some jokes that felt more awkward than they were supposed to. Like, there was a scene that was funny in the trailer where they didn't have the audio of it, and it was Adrian Brody's tile card where he's like, ah, oh, at the screen or whatever, but there's no audio for it. And when you actually see it in the movie, Adrian Brody is, like, stretching his voice to pull it off, and it's like, it doesn't feel funny, it just feels forced and awkward. And you can see the joke that Wes Anderson is going for, and you could see how it would be funny, but it feels like Adrian Brody was the wrong actor to try to have pull it off because it's not within his range. And he tries, and it's a notable effort, and it's not like it ruins the film or anything. But there's a couple of jokes like that where it just, like, it, it kind of breaks the chain of laughter where you're like, okay. There's also, like, melancholic moments, which I do like melancholic moments in these movies. Uh, to break up the laughs. Uh, but unlike the other movies, this one actually lets you know what you're in for ahead of the ending by preparing you at the beginning. So that's interesting. Overall, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, it's in the top 20 movies I saw this year, which sounds like a lot, but isn't when you consider uh, that I've seen over 70 films this year. Uh, and that's just the ones that I've ranked. There's probably a couple that I hadn't ranked that I forgot about. Uh, I have, like, a Letterbox review. I've also been keeping score on Twitter as well of all my film reviews, as well as I've been keeping score on here on YouTube. Yeah, this was definitely one that lived up to the hype. It lived up to my expectations. It's, like, one of the three big ones of this year, and I'm glad that it was as good as it was. I mean, every... Wes Anderson movie honestly should deserve a 10 because it's clear that so much hard work goes into it. Like, sure, I might complain that animation is in it and it feels very forced in, like COVID made it so that they couldn't shoot certain scenes so then because they would have to wear masks. So maybe they just outsourced it to studios and then wrote in some lazy explanation like, uh, the newspaper, like, animated this, like, a week later. And it's like a single panel of a balloon moving up. And it's like, why would they print out an animation in a newspaper of a balloon going up for no reason? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Like, in the context of the... Of whatever. <laughs> they, they just make really far stretches. But again, this movie is like one of the more like outlandish and like surreal comedically like it feels really grounded at first with like the earlier stories but then when you get into the later ones it gets it turns into a cartoon like people survive things that should kill them it's like a weird tonal juggle this one is like very imperfect and flawed and has like loose edges so i get why critics like aren't as quick to call this one a masterpiece as the other ones they still liked it more than uh life aquatic obviously but uh 
And I don't think there's anything wrong with Life Quack. I think Life Quack is one of the best ones. Uh, but I, I definitely think that this is a lot better than uh, I was worried it was going to be. It, it is, like, a little weird having it bounce between all of the uh, chapters. But they did do a good job at letting you know when it's the past past and when it's like the present past from color differentiating. I I also wish that there was more meaning to when they changed aspect ratios. There is some, but like it, there's not like concrete logic to it. Uh, for example, I thought specific stories would use specific aspect ratios and there'd be specific reasons for why they would do it. Like, in a character's head, it would become color rise whenever he sees his paintings, and it would be black and white otherwise. And maybe you could even go full screen, so that would be like, whoa, for the color part. Uh, but it never does that. It goes kind of widescreen, but, you know. And it does that sometimes, and at some moments that are kind of like that, but not all the time. It's, like, very inconsistent. There's a lot of inconsistencies in, the, in this movie, and I feel like this movie could have... I know that we've already been waiting a couple of years for this one, but this one could have baked for, like, another year, and it might have turned out better. Again, all of these things I'm talking about as flaws might be artistic choices that I just didn't find was for me. I could totally see that. But they didn't feel like artistic choices. They felt like they were rushed. Like, I don't think there was supposed to be sections where halfway through a scene... It cuts to, like, pitch black, you can't see anything, for longer than, like, five seconds to the point where you're like, did the Mui projector cut out? No, that was actually part of the Mui. Okay, we're back to the scene right where we left off. That was weird. And there's multiple scenes like that, uh, where it's just, like, out of context, no context. It's, like, weird. I don't know. It feels like this one's just more rough around the edges than the previous Wes Anderson Mui's. Like, it suffered from the pandemic. But if it didn't suffer from the pandemic, this would definitely be, like, one of the better Wes Anderson movies. Well, I shouldn't say better, because they're all, like, amazing. But this one is, like, a really good Wes Anderson movie. And it would be, like, borderline perfect if it didn't suffer from the COVID-ness. You know? It would be, like, amazing then. It, it It's still more than recommendable in its current state. It's absolutely a must-watch for anyone that likes Wes Anderson or quirky comedies or indie films or stuff like that. I absolutely recommend it, especially if you like the cast members and things like that. I, I totally think that you should absolutely check it out, especially if it's playing a theater near you or anything like that. Just support this movie, please. I know it's been doing surprisingly well at the box office, so that's cool, because... Uh, Wes Anderson, he be he be a good lad. He be making us the good films. <laughs> He's a very consistent guy when it comes to quality. I don't think a single one of his films dip lean dip below an eight out of ten for me. They're all just very good, and this is like his tenth one. So that's you can't say that about a lot of directors. It's good for him. Good for him. It's a really good one.